get a birth certificate? Mm -hmm. And it says 123. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because until you did that, we had people that convinced it was our. Oh, yeah, sure. I'll have to read all this. I'm learning about it, too. That was from Good Housekeeping. Well, that, but you remember she went back and forth to um, um, Michigan when she was real little. What? Now, who said that? You didn't get along well with the children. I decided to move west to the desert, leaving the children in care of his mother. And that was figured out how that happened, but I never heard that person. Really? Because, in fact, I was reading some of the stuff today. Somebody else said which that she and... Was she and her stepfather got along great, but she really liked him a lot. Yeah, well, see, and you never know. And did she ever talk about it so that you have any idea? That's the not frustrating not part. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I'm doing this now. I'm glad I you want are. my kids to know what went on. Yes, and not shut exactly. Up yeah. Well, you just never know. Now, we did have Mary and, um, look through most of the labels just to make sure that According to what she remembers, though, it's pretty accurate. I mean, yes. Okay. But this is well, that little, Okay. Yeah. But did you see the copies of the um, Chautauqua and Jameson papers uh -huh. showing that she still... Uh -huh. I mean, it was... I was yeah. loved it when yeah. we found that. Yeah. Well, I
tribute that this should all start here in this theater. First of all, I know the lights are out now. But from what I saw from the pictures before, is this a beautiful renovation of this theater or what? It was right here in this very theater when it was the palace that my mother received her first inspiration. She was only a little bit older than that one, right? <laughs> to go into show business. And I, I think that if it, if it is her spirit and accomplishment that have inspired you to perpetuate the spirit of new comedy through this annual festival, then I know for a fact that she's smiling down on all of you right now with a lot of pride in her heart. And speaking for my entire family, I want you to know that you've made us all very, very happy. Thanks. Now, as official chairperson for the first annual Lucille Ball Festival of New Comedy, I officially welcome you and let the laughs begin. Please best welcome to our host, Mr. Elliot Forrest. at the Lucille Ball Festival of New Comedy. We are here not only to pay tribute to the work and to the memory of Lucy, but to also showcase the many people who have been touched by her spark of comic inspiration. You will see some of these people perform this afternoon and many more over the entire weekend of the Lucy Fest here in Jamestown. Before I bring in our first performer, let me uh, introduce to you my co-host and the musical director of the Lucy Fest, he also appeared on HBO's Comedy Channel, and you may have seen him in Woody Allen's Hand and Her Sisters. Ladies and gentlemen, Rusty McGee. Thank you very much. Et en repliant le pouce de la main droite, les mettant les deux ensemble, 
sorry. Kurt is a friend. I thought a break would help him out. Oh, I thought I heard voices. You two are up early. How do you sleep? Fine. <laughs> is your friend feeling his editor? We haven't seen him yet this morning. I hope Jared didn't upset him last night. Oh, no, 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 no. Now that we're here, Kurt will be fine. He's normally a quiet accountant kind of guy. Normally, he wouldn't throw up in the car. <laughs> but he's been under a lot of pressure lately. What with the audit, trying to reconstruct the missing records and everything. You understand. I understand. Failing the lie detector test didn't help. <laughs> the whole thing has just made him a nervous wreck. I hope you don't mind us inviting him along, Tina. Kurt's a good friend. Tina! What is that racket? What? Oh, that's Jer! He's in the garage putting together the patio furniture. He wanted it to be a surprise, like with all the other records down here, so he could enjoy the view. He's been up for hours. You know what it's like. Hey, and we'll shove some of these boxes together and 
and make a table. Because these are little pictures of things that don't exist. <laughs> Ah, that never existed. <laughs> oh, you know, I had the same trouble with that gas grill that we bought, Megan, remember? Oh, that's terrible. We finally had to take it back and exchange it for the floor model. There's an idea. We can have breakfast out here on the parcel, and then we'll get the one that they put together. See this? <laughs> Kirk, 
You go help Tina in the kitchen, and we'll get the chair together, and we'll all go for a nice swim, and everything will be wonderful. I didn't steal it. Oh, we know that, Kurt. No one's accusing anyone of stealing anything, okay? In fact, it's a marvelous thing you did here, that you, Kurt, found it, the missing piece. Because now everything's bound to work. I mean, this chair is practically a devil in itself, right, Phil? Absolutely right, Chair. I suppose so. There you see. All right, I'm going. I am not a thief. Who borrowed the carving knife? Ah! I don't believe this! Give me kill Lulu and every piece of metal in the house!
this luminary that's going to illuminate our lives, this person I watched on television. So our paths crossed there when I was a kid. And when I grew up, my father went on with the Los Angeles Dodgers. I went to Los Angeles too, and I became an actor. In the back of my mind, I thought the Jamestown connection is going to put me in touch with Lucille Ball, and maybe she'll give me a break in the show business, and I can become the star I knew I should be. And of course, that didn't happen. I went to the Lucille Ball Academy. She had an academy for actors, but I never met her. And then, oddly enough, our paths crossed a little later. I got married to a girl named Mary McRae, Gordon McRae's daughter. Some of you, you may have known or may have met. And Sheila McRae was a very good friend of Lucille Ball's, and I met her socially. Our paths crossed, and we talked of Jamestown. And she had tremendous fond memories of Jamestown and, and carried in her heart a love for this town. She wanted to come back to it. Then our paths crossed again, I crossed again in 1979 in New York, and I met little Lucy, Lucy Arnaz. And we became very good and fast friends, so our paths crossed there. And then I did Life with Lucy, her last television show. And I was fortunate enough to finally play with her. So the Jamestown connection really came to the foreground then. And really made, I made the connection, the Jamestown connection. And we talked about Jamestown then. And I was very fortunate to play with her. She was a thorough professional. And what she would have loved most of all is this tribute that you hear the Jamestown are giving to her. And our paths again are across. So I'm delighted to be here. And I am applauding you because like a big Ferris wheel that used to be in Selma, Things come full circle in life, and she's now back here on the palace stage where she began. So life has that kind of uniqueness, doesn't it? She talked about the uniqueness of Jamestown, and the, perhaps the Ferris wheel, perhaps the 19th floor of Moonbrook, and perhaps the Blue Good Viking Lodge is here on the stage tonight. As we pay tribute, let's applause our, applaud ourselves and the Keep coming, tell your friends and neighbors, and let's do it again next year, only bigger and better. Okay? Absolutely. All of all shows here at the Old Palace. It was the magic of Vaudeville that inspired young Lucy. Today, the Vaudeville tradition continues with a new generation of Vaudevillians. Here's another of the Lucy Fest's new comedians. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dan Looker.
question. A lot of you are asking yourselves, hey, just what would happen if we fed that baby nothing but steroids? <laughs> I know that's what you were thinking. Yeah, you gotta use your imagination a little bit. If you drink enough, you'll get ideas like this. But Armando and I are going to show you now is something that's completely macho, totally mindless. My favorite trick. Just remember three simple things. 
911. <laughs> Actually, this, I'm not used to doing this under lights and stuff. I'm kind of nervous. Could a few choking people lie down right in front of me? <laughs>